Livestock and agriculture have been a vital part of this area uh, for hundreds of years. Um, we have records of William Connor, the farming that he did, the livestock that he raised in the early part of Indiana statehood. Livestock and agriculture were vital to the survival of Indiana's earliest settlers like those represented in our 1836 Prairie Town. In the early and mid 20th century, Eli Lilly had his experimental farm here where he raised horses, cattle, sheep, and hogs. Today, here at Connor Prairie, we continue this rich agricultural tradition by continuing to raise livestock. Uh, but instead of focusing on production, we now focus on preservation and education. So today we're gonna to talk about our heritage breeds program. So most of the animals that we raise here at Connor Prairie are heritage breeds, which means they're breeds of animals that were once uh, very popular, especially historically, uh, but have since lost popularity as more modern breeds have developed. These animals often have traits that modern breeds lack, and they're also genetically diverse from most modern breeds of livestock. It's vital to preserve these because once those genetics are gone, they're gone forever. We select the breeds of livestock that we raise here at Connor Prairie based on the historical accuracy for the site and for the time period. We have records dating back hundreds of years uh, describing the types of livestock that they would have had, uh, so we try to find animals that meet those descriptions as closely as possible. In many cases, the animals that they would have had are extinct, uh, so we have to find the next closest thing to what they would have had that meets those descriptions. Here at Connor Prairie, we are a working farm, uh, and we work hard to increase numbers of these rare heritage breeds. In addition to that, we work with other farmers to help increase genetic diversity of the herds and to raise awareness of their importance. At the same time, we're also working to find what makes these breeds unique and marketable, whether that's the unique flavor of the meat, the richness of the milk, the quality of the wool, or maybe a trait that the breed has, uh, such as parasite resistance or ability to thrive on pasture and on forage. The other major part of the agriculture program here at Connor Prairie is education. Uh, the animals are an amazing way to help connect guests with agriculture and help them understand how ag is such an important part of their lives. We can also raise awareness of heritage breeds and their importance in the world, and in some cases, hopefully inspiring a future generation of young people passionate about saving heritage breeds. One of the heritage breeds that we raise here at Connor Prairie is the Arapago. The Arapago is on the critical list with the Livestock Conservancy, meaning that there's less than 500 in the world. There are less than 300 of the Arapa goats in the United States, and Connor Prairie is one of the largest active breeding herds. The Arapa goats were introduced in the United States in the 1990s, and they were brought in by Plymouth Plantation. The Arapa goat comes in a variety of colors, anything from a light tan to black. Uh, one of the features that most of the goats have is that they have a badger stripe face. One of the reasons why Plymouth Plantation brought the goats in the 90s is because the Arapa goat is one of the closest accurate looking goat to what they would have had in the time period. Captain Cook left these goats on one of the islands off of New Zealand as a food source for the settlers to come in the future. So one of the reasons why the settlers in the 1800s would have had these goats is the fact that they are dual purpose, they're good for both meat and milk. The Arapa goat was left feral on the island for close to 200 years, which is why they more accurately represent the goats that we would have had in Prairie Town. The sheep that we have here at Connor Prairie are another heritage breed called the Tunis. Tunis were actually one of the first breeds developed in the United States. They descended from stock brought over from Africa. The first fat-tailed sheep stock brought over here were a gift from the Bay of Tunisia, and they were crossbred with the sheep that settlers had already brought here to America to develop what we know today as the Tunis. The Tunis became popular in the 1800s, and we do know that Thomas Jefferson and John Adams actually raised them themselves. Unfortunately, they did almost die out during the Civil War. Um, there was one flock left in South Carolina, though, that helped save the breed, um, and they are once again becoming popular, even though they are still on the watch list for the Livestock Conservancy. In addition to being known for their coloration of being red with a cream-colored wool, they are known for a lot of other traits as well. One of the characteristics that makes them very valuable is that they are very heat tolerant because they do descend from stock from Africa. In addition to that though, they are dual purpose, which means they can be used for their meat or their wool. Tunis are generally very calm and make excellent mothers and usually have sets of twins. Connor Prairie has kept tuna sheep for around 15 years now and they've always done very well for us here. One of the other rare breeds that we raise here at Connor Prairie are called English Longhorns. Worldwide, they are not considered rare, but in the United States, there are currently less than 60. There's documentation of cattle that have the same descriptions as the English Longhorns that came over with some of the original settlers. In Prairie Town, English Longhorns would have been a common cow that a lot of people would have had, and later uh, in the 19th century, they fell out of favor and became extinct in the United States. With the English Longhorns, they always have that white stripe down their back, they have a white patch on their thigh, and both males and females have horns that curl towards their face. 
The English Longhorns were reintroduced in the United States in the 1990s. Connor Prairie was able to acquire some around 2010, and since then we've been able to import new genetics to help diversify the genetics here in the United States. English Longhorns are one of my favorite breeds here at Connor Prairie. They're really docile, great mothers, and they are a lot of fun to work with. One of the reasons why the English Longhorns would have been good for the settlers that would have been living in Indiana at the time is that they are tri-purpose, meaning that they're good for meat, milk, and for draft power. So these little critters hanging out with me right now are Ossabaw hogs, which come from a small island off the coast of Georgia, but they were brought there by Spanish explorers in the 1500s. So Spanish pigs are not necessarily accurate for the 1830s in Indiana. They would not have been this far north. However, according to documentation that we have from that time period, the type of pig that would have been Indiana looked very similar to what these do today. Because these hogs live feral on the island, they developed in a way that helped them adapt to that harsh climate. Because there would be periods where there would be a shortage of food, they developed in a way that they are able to store extra fat to help them get through those periods of famine. The reason that we like to keep pigs that do have the extra layer of fat is because the fat in the meat actually helps the flavor taste better. This extra layer of fat gives the meat a unique flavor which makes it very popular with chefs and in charcuterie boards. We've kept this type of pig here at Connor Prairie for over 15 years now, but while we do have them here, our pig farming today looks a little bit different than what they would have done in the 1830s. So while we have them inside a fence, uh, actually in the 1830s they would have just let them free range in the woods. The herd of Osaba hogs that we keep here at Connor Prairie are very important to the genetic preservation of the breed because there are fewer than 2,000 of these worldwide. Our latest addition to our heritage breed animals here at Connor Prairie are the American breed rabbits. These rabbits date back over 100 years and were first recognized as a breed in 1918. They were originally developed here in the U.S. by Lewis Salisbury, who is believed to have used several now extinct other breeds to develop it. The breed itself at one point was nearly extinct, but today they're listed as a watch status with the American Livestock Conservancy on their conservation priority list. A watch status means that this breed totals a population of less than 2,000 rabbits globally. It wasn't until 2005 that the Livestock Conservancy added rabbits to the conservation priority list, thus beginning the recovery of the breed's population. The American breed rabbits have two recognized acceptable colors, blue and white. The white ones have red eyes. They are most known for their easy, gentle temperament, beautiful silky fur, large litters, and good mothering abilities. Commercially, they are used for their fur and their meat. They are also known as a hardy breed, and when full grown, generally weigh between nine and 12 pounds and can live between five and eight years. Come meet our newest additions here at the Animal Encounters Barn at Connor Prairie. Thank you for learning about Connor Prairie's heritage breeds. We invite you to come out and visit us and meet these animals for yourself.